So first, let us define what is geotechnical engineering. Geotechnical engineering is a civil engineering specialization that deals with the properties and behaviors of soil and rock materials upon the application of force in relation to constructing foundation of projects. In addition to that, uh, geotechnical engineering is also concerned with forecasting the movements and types of materials on Earth's surface and um, designing a certain type of foundation to withstand them. Um, the modern applications of geotechnical engineering was believed to have started from the works of Carl von Terzaghi, a famous engineer and geologist. Tarzaghi would often travel the world and during his travels, he had observed that foundations of structure lack applications of earthworks. And so, in 1910, he had decided to offer his life in um, or to the advancement of um, soil mechanics. In fact, in 1925, he had published his work on soil mechanics and had developed um, the principle of effective stress in soils and frameworks for the bearing capacity of foundations theory. Long before the modern applications of geotechnical engineer, ge engineering um, usage in construction, um, the art early applications of um, geotechnical engineering were related to water supply projects, irrigations, dams, and dikes, um, dated back to 2000 BCE. Um, before Terzaghi founded the modern applications of geotechnical engineering, foundations of structures were um, considered art rather than science, and so failures were inevitable. Um, one of the most famous um, foundation-related blunders might be the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Pisa, Italy. Um, the tower had a heavy weight and a weak foundation, which resulted to its um, present leaning form. To strengthen its foundation, um, insertion of cement and installation of rein reinforcement were made, but it was not until May 2008 that um, sensors showed stability in its foundation. And um, its present leaning form is expected to last until at least um, 200 years, according to engineers handling the tower. Hi, hello, good morning everyone. I am Carl from the Geotechnical Engineering Group and I'm here to discuss or present the duties of Geotechnical Engineers. So now let's proceed. I have here the top three duty of Geotechnical Engineers. For number one, we have research and study soil. Marami magkatanong dyan kung bakit pa kailangang pag-aralan yung soil and rock. Kung pwede namang itayo na lang basta-basta yung structure sa lugar na yun, kung ganun din namang ginagawa ng nakakarami. Pero in engineering firm, kailangan natin pag-aralan lahat, including the soil and the rock. Bakit? For them to evaluate kung suitable ba yung foundation na yun sa certain infrastructure, like the tunnel, the roads, etc. So, the number two duty is assessing. So, ano yung ina-assess nila? They are assessing the data from the field. 
And lastly, we have here the designing. Ano yung dinidesign nila? Well, they are designing the foundation na suitable doon sa infrastructure na yun. And hindi lang naman yun yung kanilang duty. Well, they can be also supervise the construction, they can conduct lab tests, and most especially they can, I mean, they will write and present reports. So aside from it, they are also consultants. And that's it for their duties. Yeah, it's kind of short, but I hope you got something from it. And after and before I end this, I want you guys to watch a short video about their duties. So here you go. Hi, my name is Mark Stringer, and I'm one of the Geotechnical Engineering Lecturers uh, in the Department of Civil and Natural Resources Engineering. One of the things that's really exciting about this field at the moment is the solutions that we are going to have to develop as engineers to address some of the major problems um, facing the world. We're going to have to develop the solutions that allow us to accommodate ever-increasing density in our urban centres. This is going to drive increasingly complex interactions between the buildings and the infrastructure on which they rely. We're also going to have to address the issue of climate change. We're going to have to learn what the impacts of rising sea level are, how to defend against uh, coastal erosion, and increasingly how to deal with the effects of major storms, uh, which are going to increase in frequency and severity. Geotechnical engineers work at the interface between the natural world and the built environment. We need to understand the materials that we're going to encounter, those that we build on, those that we will use in our construction, how these materials are going to respond to the demands that we place on them and the loads that they are going to place on our structure in turn. In New Zealand, we're all familiar with the effects of earthquakes and in particular we've probably all heard about liquefaction where a previously strong and stable soil suddenly becomes soft and very weak. In my research I'm really interested to try and find out how the different materials that we'll encounter in different parts of the country uh, will respond to the effects of a strong earthquake. Will they liquefy and if they do how will they perform when we've got structures built on top of them? And what does that mean for the performance of the structure after the earthquake? So if you've got any questions about geotechnical engineering, um, and in particular the courses that we might offer you as an undergraduate, please do get in touch uh, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. So yeah, that's it for the duties of geotechnical engineering and I hope you got something from the video and from me. And now, I want you guys to listen to someone who is going to talk about the importance of geotechnical engineering. Thank you for listening. Good day. I'm here to discuss about the importance of geotechnical engineering. So what makes geotechnical engineering important? Geotechnical engineering deals with the study and review of the natural environment before a construction takes place. It is the responsibility of a geotechnical engineer to inspect the environmental conditions of the site prior to the construction. This includes the quality of the soil and rocks, atmosphere, climate, vegetation, and natural resources to determine its suitability for the project. Next is engineers will be able to evaluate the stability of the ground, assess any risks and or contaminations, and help to determine the types of foundation earthworks that will be required. Through geotechnical surveys, engineers are able to assess the capacity of the surface to support the loads applied by the structure, and as well identify the potential for hazards, such as earthquakes, landslides, rock slides, differential settlements, and floodings. Geotechnical engineers develop strategies to minimize their environmental impacts. Geotechnical engineers ensure long-term stability of various structures and earthworks. If you want a successful structure, you need a successful foundation. 
Geotechnical Engineers Design Foundation that prevents structures and earthworks from deforming. So if you don't want a building that leans, make sure that you have a licensed and experienced geotechnical engineering on your team. Geotechnical engineers also use principles of physics and chemistry to modify the characteristics and properties of the subsurface so that it can support civil infrastructures. Through geotechnical engineering practices and techniques, ground surface is manipulated and improved to provide a long-term support and make it more appropriate for the construction project. Geotechnical engineering is also important in coastal and ocean engineering in relation to building wharves, jetties, marinas, and coastal defenses, as well as foundation and anchor system for offshore structures such as oil rig platforms. Geotechnical engineering practices are also used in coastal engineering to control erosion, place, construct, and regulate coastal structures standing on the seabed, as well as nourish beaches, and develop and maintain ports, harbors, and related navigating facilities. Geotechnical engineers are responsible for the design, construction, maintenance, and monitoring of thousands of dams that are providing water storage. If it weren't for geotechnical engineers, it would be hard to transport clean and usable water to our homes and other infrastructures. Basically, geotechnical engineering is very important because civil engineering has many diverse important encounters with soil. All civil engineering work, such as buildings, dams, tunnels, canals, houses, are found in the surface of the earth. So it is necessary to understand the capacity of the soil and the effects of groundwater. Geotechnical engineering have contributed a lot to our country since it is one of the key on having a stable infrastructure like high-rise building for example grand height hotel manila which is 318 meters tall famous san roque dam which is 200 meters tall highways for example in commonwealth and housing like here in baguio so these kinds of infrastructure is not possible to build if it has a weak foundation or if the soil under it is not capable of carrying a huge amount of load. So we are able to build this infrastructure because the geotechnical engineers have tested and examined the soil beneath it beforehand. Usually in constructing or building a skyscraper or high-rise building, their foundation is usually built on bedrock. So here, deep excavation is present. It may not seem in the public eye, but it is significant in strengthening the foundation. As you can see here, we have uh, vertical beams, also called piles, that are sunk through the soil and embedded in the bedrock. So it is used as foot footings to secure the uh, structure. So next is we have geosynthetic. With the help of or with the knowledge of geotechnical engineering, we are able to produce this kind of product the geosynthetic. These are the products used to stabilize the trade. It is used in contact with soil, rocks, or any geotechnical materials. If here in the Philippines we have companies that are producing these kinds of product like uh, like Philippine Geosynthetic Incorporated. So it is essential here in the Philippines because it is considered as a recognizable material that may be replaced for insufficient raw materials like cement or end steel. So next is uh, thermal geotechnics. This relates to uh, thermal energy so since we are since the philippines is located along the plane of fire of pacific volcano we are able to get a good grasp on harvesting thermal energy so 
ge- geotechnical engineering or geotechnical engineers can help other professionals that are specialized in utilizing thermal energy that people could benefit and uh, by conducting site investigation and acquiring data it helps on projects especially on designing the foundation so here in the philippines we have here two examples of geothermal power stations the Tiwi Geothermal Complex in Albay and Malitbog Geothermal Co- uh, Power Station in Leyte. So, in my opinion, I think Philippines will continue to develop, to develop and it will need uh, more infrastructures that is used by its citizens. But these infrastructures will need, will need to have a good or a strong foundation and that is when the geotechnical engineer will do its job to test or examine the soil in the site before it is approved for uh, construction. The so Philippines is a developing country. I believe uh, geotechnical engineering will be in demand in the future because not only it focuses on building or designing a foundation but it also deals with the uh, uh, study of the behavior of Earth's material, which is significant and for a uh, sustainable development of civil infrastructure. Thank you. First equipment, soil moisture content testing apparatus. This equipment allows determination of soil moisture content using tools such as cans, oven, and balance. Second, specific gravity determination apparatus. The equipment is meant to demonstrate the determination of specific gravity of soil gravel specimen using apparatus. Third, standard sieve sets. The equipment is to support experimental determination of the quantity and percentage of sand, gravel, and boulders in a given soil sample by conducting sieve analysis. Number four, hydrometer analysis. The equipment allows testing of soil to determine Determine fine grain soils content such as clay particles in a given soil specimen. Equipment number 5. Liquid Limit Test Apparatus. This liquid limit test apparatus allows measurement liquid limit of a given soil specimen by conducting tests using CASA grade liquid limit device and tools. Number 6. Plastic Limit Test Apparatus This test apparatus allows measurement of plastic lim- limit given of a soil specimen by conducting tests using glass plate, cans, spatula, and oven. Equipment number 7 Modified Proctor's Compaction Test Equipment This test equipment allows measurement of optimum moisture content of soil specimens. Equipment number eight, sand cone method tools, Ottawa sand balance. This equipment allows measurement of field unit weight, compacted soil mass, and its moisture contents. Equipment number nine, and confined compar- compression test machine. This equipment allows determination of uncombined compression strength of soil and its shear strength. Equipment number 10, direct shear test machine. This equipment allows measurement of shear strength of sand and determination of angle of friction. Equipment number 11, 
Structural Shear Test Machine. This equipment can be used for research and conventional testing for determining shear strength parameters. It has the capability to carry out tests on a compacted or on undisturbed soil samples to conduct tests under different conditions of consolidation and different conditions of drainage. Measurement of shear strength of soil and the stress strain behavior and failure can be determined. Last, equipment number 12, consolidation test machine. This equipment can be used for research and convention, conventional testing to determine soil parameters relating to settlement properties and behavior. It can be used to estimate both and the magnitude and the time rate of settlement. So today, I'm discussing about geotechnical engineering. So, good morning classmates. I will discuss to you about organization. So, what is organization? Organization is a group of people that have a common goal to achieve. And today, I give you an example of organization developments. First is SMDC. And the second is UP Diliman. So, first, we discuss about SMEC Philippines and all about that. SMEC Philippines. So, SMEC is a line of all knowledge that local expertise to address the needs of the diverse communities and has delivered thousands of projects and more than 100,000 in the Philippines. So, SMEC Philippines is a diverse organization that in the Philippines to help to gain knowledge and having new technology. And the next is UP Institute of Civil Engineering. So, what is UP Institute of Civil Engineering? Civil Engineering to our institute in the creation of Institute of Civil Engineering to address the growing need of center of excellence. So, the Institute of Civil Engineering is an organization that provides resources. So, they provide latest information and practices relevant to the discipline and its associated industry. And next, we go to the international organization. First is American Society of Civil Engineers. ASCE is dedicated to the advancement, advancement of the science and profession of civil engineering and the enhancement of human welfare through the activities of the society. And so, the American Society of Civil Engineering is a non-profit organization that focuses on regulating and providing education for engineers through the promotion of research, practice, and instruction. Deep Foundation Institute is a non-profit organization to advocate for innovation, design, improvement, and installation of systems of people and process. So their mission is to help advance the field of geotechnical engineering through networking and sharing knowledge. So what is the benefits of joining organization? First is so they provide licensures, resources, take action on issue promote ethical practices, and advocate engineers everywhere. Because of time of pandemic, the organization is promoting flexible learning arrangement, focus on online learning, and also to create opportunity for leadership development, learning, student engagement, and fostering of shared share interests. And so also, organization is quite opportunity for leadership, development, learning, student engagement, and fostering of shared interests. And for the purpose of the organization, the purpose of the organization is to strong relationship and be part of the active society. Because society right now is like a race, social status, educational level, and also to provide necessary skills and knowledge to our youth people like me to improve ourselves as an active citizen in this society. 
and also to build up and encourage the other to help the member and train the development skills like this pandemic, not all students access food or buy books like in a place to face class. So, the organization is full of time, e-books, etc. and the internet. So that's all. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rafael and I'm going to present to you the real-life examples where a geotechnical engineer's job is needed. First is the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, started at 1173 and ends at 1372. It was found out that the tower was leaning when the structure is half done, and that the foundation is an even soft clay and it cannot carry the structure's weight. But over the years, several reconstruction was done to stop the tower from leaning and it makes its foundation more strong. Through the help of geotechnical engineers, they have understood the foundation and addressed the problem so that in the future, the tower will not collapse. Second is the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, constructed from 2580 to 2560 BC. It was made from limestones, granite, basalt, and mortar and its foundation were laid with limestone blocks and up from the bedrock from, of the plateau, in contrast to the belief that it was over a flat sandy base. This is an example where the Egyptians understood the importance of the foundation and that is the early examples of geotechnical engineering. Because of the structure's sturdiness and the effort of the Egypt's government to protect the pyramid, the pyramid has been standing for thousands of years. Next is the Angat Reservoir, constructed from November 1961 to October 16, 1967, located at Angat River in San Lorenzo, North Zagaray, Bulacan. It was part of the Angat Ipo La Mesa water system. The dam supplies 90% of raw water from Metro Manila through Metro Me Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System and it irrigates thousands of he hectares of farmland in Bulacan and Pampanga. The work of geotechnical engineer here is to study, the assess, study and assess the soil where the structure will be constructed and investigates the relationship of soil to the water because Water can travel through soils. If that happens, the soil is not suitable. The place is not suitable for dams or needs to do research so that the water from the reservoir will not travel through the soil and not endanger the dam structure. Fourth is the Payatas Landfill QC. We all know that landslide is common in the Philippines and it is a problem that needs to be addressed. In this incident, there are 218 deaths, but it was said to the unofficial report that the casualty reached over thousands of deaths. In finding a place for dump sites, sev several civil engineers' specialization is needed, and one of them is geotechnical engineers, because geotechnical engineers will assess the soil if it is perfect for dump site, because if not, it is not a suitable, food, a suitable place for this type of site because if this kind of incident takes place, life is at risk, at risk. Lastly is the Metro Manila Subway in NCR. Construction began on December 2019 and estimated time to finish is 2022. This is part of the project of President Duterte called Build, Build, Build. It will travel from Valenzuela to Paranaque with 15 stations. This project is possible because of the loan provided by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, known as JICA. And the geotechnical engineer's job here is very important because they will study the place where it is suitable to meet also the death, the death of the subway. They need to know how deep it should be 
so that the structures above will not be in danger. It's very important because it will ensure the subway safety and the structures above. If they did not make their job accordingly, it might put so many lives at risk. Thank you. Good day everyone, I am Ashley Guevara and I am here to report to you some tips on becoming a geotechnical engineer. These tips are based on my research, so without further ado, let's start. Tip number one, master's degree. According to my research, some companies that have exciting projects require either a master's degree or a PhD to an interview. If you don't have any, they say that you should try considering some part-time job first and earn some master's degree as soon as possible. Next tip, find a good supervisor. Since your supervisor, supervisor sorry, will be the one who will guide you throughout the day and also assign your responsibilities, it is important to do a background check on him or her as his or her past experience, his studies, and how his or her cap is capable to handle. He should be competent and morally upright and has a good communication skills. Tip number three, resist temptation with the highest bidder. Pay isn't everything. You would rather work with, high, with enough pay rather than working with a high pay that is full of toxic people or at work. Next tip, Find a job that has a lot of field work. Field work help, helps us to appreciate the world we live in as we see and investigate it throughout, throughout the eyes of the organism being studied. In connection to ge geotechnical engineer, it helps to discover and learn more when you are working in the field. Next tip. Get involved in an organization. Organizations will help you to perform tasks more efficiently. As we learn from our module one, our organizations provide a networking me mechanism to explore more people that has a lot of similarities. Next tip, be humble. Being humble is a must, especially when you're a fresh graduate. Since you still seek for experience, learning is a step-by-step -step process, so always be patient when, it's, when it comes to exploring. Last tip, have fun. Take time to rewind. Don't be a workaholic. Take time to travel, bond with your loved ones, or eat somewhere. Always give time for yourself. So that's it from the tips. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I am Nessun Senyo and I am here to report the Geotechnical Engineering Job Program. Geotechnical engineers use their in-depth knowledge of soil and rock to assess risk and solve problems on diverse infrastructure projects. Geotechnical engineers research and study soil to evaluate its suitability for foundations, to investigate and assess construction sites, conduct lab tests, create design for structures, supervise construction, and write and present reports. They work on such projects as designing tunnels, roadways, retaining walls, and earth dams, as well as helping to create strategies for the cleanup and management of contaminated sites. Salary. Based on my research, the average salary of a geotechnical engineer is 405,880 pesos per year. There are growing numbers of specialist geotechnical consultancies. You'll find the majority of jobs in private sectors working for engineering and construction, organizations, or consultancies. All of these companies and environmental consultancies also recruit geotechnical engineers, graduate opportunity for geotechnical roles are currently buoyant as plant and existing buildings are increasingly being repurposed. 
Clear prospect. You may be given less complex projects to work on to start with, but within a few years, you'll take on increasing responsibility for challenging schemes with large financial implications. You may also take responsibility for overseeing the work of other professionals on site. If leadership or getting involved in strategic work appeals to you, a management role, head of department, or even leading a company might be of interest. You could progress by gaining insight into different areas. For example, focusing on geotechnical engineering and infrastructure in areas such as rail, highways, and water. Or you could move into geotechnical engineering in the energy sector, focusing on carbon capture, storage, renewable energy, offshore or onshore, onshore oil, and gas or nuclear power. The expertise of geotechnical engineers is in demand. As the global population increases, means there are ambitions to develop parts of the world affected by natural hazards such as flooding or earthquakes. That's all for the geotechnical engineer job profile. Let's hear the next one. Good day everyone, I'm Emmanuel Padilla and I'm going to discuss some famous geotechnical engineers. First is John Augustine de Gaulle. He was a grandfather of soil mechanics and he derives a equation for the calculation of calculation of natural earth pressure or earth pressure or retaining voice. Next is William Rankin. He, he was dealt with soil mechanics and he has a theory of theory theory of earth pressure. Next is Carl Von Terzaghi. He was an Australian geotechnical engineer and also known as the father of soil mechanics. Arthur as a grande. Um, he was a former former professor at Harvard University and he started a uh, soil mechanic and he has a degree of civil engineering before he was going to US. And the last one is Alex Skepto. He was established soil mechanics at Imperial College and, and also he was one of the um, founding of the founding of the discipline of soil mechanics and that's all thank you.